This is the Transportation TV News Update. I'm Tony Dorsey reporting. These are among the nation's experts in transportation, and their opinions matter. That's why this group of executives from transportation departments from more than 20 states are headed to the White House office building. David Bernhard is president of the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials, AASHTO. I think it's great that they've been engaging with us, um, other CEOs and other officials from DOTs. So this is like the second or third time we've been asked to come. And so what's most likely going to happen is they're going to discuss some of the things that have come out, an executive order on streamlining, um, the environmental process, probably talk about that. And hopefully we will talk about the future funding. Christy Hall is South Carolina's Secretary of Transportation. Basically, we're dealing with a crumbled infrastructure in our state, just like many other states. So less than 20% of our pavements were in good condition. We were 10 years behind on our widening projects. Significant number of structurally deficient bridges, and we have the highest fatality rate in the nation on our rural roads. So we knew we had to take action. Our General Assembly heated our policymakers at the state level, came to the table and said we want to start solving this issue, and so they've uh, basically, in essence, doubled our state resourcing uh, for us in South Carolina. So we're looking forward to, to putting that to work, and we want to see what on the federal side can be brought in to help leverage those dollars. South Carolina is one of nearly 30 states that have, since 2012, passed legislation to increase funding for transportation. On the federal level, however, motor fuel taxes and other related fees that support the Highway Trust Fund have remained the same for the past 24 years. In August 2014, the Congressional Budget Office estimated that $157 billion in additional revenues would be required to maintain current spending levels plus inflation between 2015 and 2024. So the need for investment is great on both the federal and state levels. Despite that funding gap, when asked about the message he was delivering to the White House today, Wyoming Director of Transportation William Panos was upbeat. But just encouragement to continue their work towards regulatory reform, encouragement to continue their work towards um, a budget which focuses on formula-based funding uh, and some discretionary funding as well. Rural states, it's particularly important that we move forward on formula-based funding and discretionary funding. And, uh, and I think those are, you know, again, those are encouraging things. We want to encourage them to continue to do that. From Ashto's Washington headquarters, it was a short drive to the Eisenhower White House office building, where these executives heard from Transportation Secretary Elaine Chow, the Director of the Office of Management and Budget, Mick Mulvaney, Special Assistant to the President for Infrastructure Policy, D.J. Gribben, and Alex Hergott, the White House Council on Environmental Quality's Associate Director for Infrastructure. The White House team revealed that President Trump's infrastructure package will be broken up into three pieces, with the largest segment of funding dedicated to projects that already have some private or local money secured. The administration's goal is to use $200 billion in federal funding to leverage about a trillion dollars worth of overall infrastructure investment. And while more details are yet to come, Colorado DOT Director Shailen Batt noted that the path forward must be a bipartisan one. Yeah, when I was at USDOT, my boss was Ray LaHood, uh, and uh, great Secretary of Transportation, and he was a Republican congressman from Illinois, and he used to say there's no Republican bridges and there's no Democrat uh, highways. And I feel like this is hopefully uh, one area where uh, Democrats and Republicans can come together to say infrastructure is a bipartisan issue, and so whatever the vehicle is, if you pardon the pun, um, hopefully we can find a path forward. Toby Muse is behind the camera, and this is Tony Dorsey reporting for Transportation TV News.